So in the last video, I mentioned how actually you can you can view the the insula and the insular cortex when you remove kind of like this lateral sulcus. Now I might have said something else there, but it's after it's kind of like very deep beneath this lateral sulcus. Now, if I quickly recap the lateral sulcus, the lateral sulcus had a um, anterior horizontal branch or the anterior branch. It also had the ascending branch or the anterior ascending branch, and it also had the posterior branch. Now, the posterior branch, something to identify is that the posterior branch of the lateral sulcus goes all the way up to the supramarginal gyrus, goes all the way up to the supramarginal gyrus. If we quickly recap what this area is, this is the inferior parietal lobule, the inferior parietal lobule. Now, um, also we forgot to mention that the lateral sulcus also has a stem. It's kind of like a flower, it has, or like a tree, okay, like, like a flower, it has a stem. This is the stem of the lateral sulcus, and I just talked about the anterior, ascending and posterior rami. Now, quickly recap, the anterior ramus divides it into pars orbitalis or the orbital part. Then here, this part that's formed by the anterior and the ascending branches is the triangular part. And these are all parts of the inferior frontal gyrus. These are parts of the inferior frontal gyrus because remember, the lines coming off of the precentral sulcus, you remember? Those lines were the inferior frontal sulcus over here, dividing this, making this the inferior frontal gyrus. This was your opercular part. Now you're gonna learn some more interesting things. So what's covering the insula? Something called the operculum. What's this part? The opercular part. It's not all a coincidence. Now if we go back up to here, if you remove the operculum, you can then view the insula. The insula is over here. So after removal of the operculum, after you take back the lateral sulcus, remember this was the lateral sulcus, and remember the temporal operculum was just above the superior temporal gyrus, you can see the insula, the insular cortex. Now, I want to talk about how there's actually two types or two parts of the operculum. You can have your frontal parietal operculum, or you can have your temporal operculum. Now we're going to come back to this. For now, just know that the operculum is in two parts. It's got the frontal parietal operculum as well as the temporal operculum. Now if we come back here, then above the insula, well, let's talk about the insula. Let's talk about the parts of the insula. So the insula is divided into basically an anterior insula and a posterior insula by a central sulcus of insula, or sulcus centralis insulae. Now this central sulcus of insula divides the anterior part and posterior part of the insula, and the anterior part is made up of three or four short gyri, three or four short gyri, and the posterior part is made up of one long gyrus. Now what differentiates or divides this entire insula cortex, insula, from the rest of the hemispheres? All oh, right, circle, circular sul sulcus of insula. So sulcus circularis insulae. So if the question is, what uh, sulcus divides the hemispheres from the insula, it's the cent circular sulcus, sorry. Okay, now just a quick recap. Here was your orbital operculum, here was your frontal operculum, here was your parietal operculum, and here is your temporal operculum. Now if we go to this diagram, it's not here, it's over here. Now, actually, the lateral sulcus does in fact divide it into three parts, but pars opercularis, if you combine the frontal and parietal operculum, this whole part in green, so this is operculum orbitale, right? This is operculum frontale. This would be your operculum frontoparietal. But for the sake of our class, for frontoparietal operculum, we're going to include this part. So once again, operculum is two in two parts. It's in frontoparietal operculum and temporal operculum. And here, quite easily, you can see that temporal operculum is formed simply by the superior temporal gyrus, by the superior temporal gyrus. And the frontoparietal operculum is formed by many, many parts. But they're quite simple. We've already discussed 
pars triangularis. We already know about the triangular part. We already know about the opercular part. Now we're going to say that the frontal part of operculum is made up of triangular part, opercular part, as well as parts of the precentral gyrus, parts of the postcentral gyrus, as well as parts of the inferior parietal lobule. Inferior parietal lobule. Okay? We pause this and look over it again and again. Another um, image, another diagram image showing you the insular cortex. What is the insular cortex? The insular cortex is actually a piece of cerebellar cortex, so the part that's meant to be out here, but buried deep. I don't know, due to some kind of evolution. You have your parietal operculum, you have your frontal operculum here, you have your orbital operculum here, and remember orbital operculum corresponds to literally the basal surface, the basal surface of the inferior parietal, frontal gyrus, sorry. Okay, here you have your short gyri, here you have your central sulcus, and here you have your long gyri. Now, there's something else, there's something called a limen, limen insulae, limen of insula. Now, that's this expanded part anteriorly. That's the expanded part anteriorly of the insula. And one question could be, sulcus circularis insulae, so that sulcus we talked about before, which um, which um, divided, which distinguished this insula from the rest of the hemispheres. In what part of the insula is sulcus circularis insulae interrupted? And it's only interrupted in the region of the limen of insula, or the anterior expanded part of the insula.